In early 2011, a version of Paul Cezanne's The Card Players was sold for about 259 million US dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that's an equivalent of 274 million US dollars today. That is a lot of money. The second most expensive painting ever sold was Jackson Pollock's number no. 5, which was sold in late 2006 for about 140 million dollars. That's an equivalent to 165 million dollars today. Very often, when people look at this painting, generally, what they say is, I could do that. Man, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said that, well, then I'd be rich enough to buy this Jackson Pollock. Why is art so expensive? This is a very tough question, and it's kind of entangled among so many different interdependent factors. First of all, the art market. It's highly speculative. It's kind of like the stock market. If somebody could explain exactly why certain stocks go up and certain stocks go down at certain times, what to invest in, what's not good to invest in, if there was a simple answer to that, then we would all be rich. But of course, there's still some trends and some general principles on why some artworks are more expensive than others. Art is a very scarce resource. Generally, when an artist makes a work of art, it's one of a kind, like a painting. Thus, individual works of art are more valuable than mass-produced products, like those things you buy from Walmart that says made in China. This, also made in China, but this is one of a kind. So in general, things that are unique often have a higher value in our society. You can always build another million dollar home, but you can't really paint another Monet. Because Monet's dead. And this is a reason why sometimes an artist's work will become more valuable when he or she dies because they're not really around to produce more, which makes the works that they created while they were alive kind of a limited resource that can't be further produced. You can, however, still discover lost artworks, but that's a topic for another time. So the value of art is often driven up by those who invest in it, kind of like the stock market as well. If a buyer sees value in a particular work of art, they may choose to put money into it, and this may or may not cause other people to feel the same way about that particular artwork and then in turn drive the demand up even further. And similar to other aspects of the financial market, certain people have a bigger voice and certain people are more influential and certain voices have more power to be able to drive up the prices of certain artworks. Some artists also become famous and fame can often drive up your salary. But why do famous artists get paid more? I don't know, why does Jennifer Lawrence get paid millions of dollars per film while an unknown actress might only get paid a few hundred dollars? Does it really mean Jennifer Lawrence is hundreds or thousands of times better than any other actresses? Not necessarily, because the relationship between price and value is seldomly a linear one. It's almost always a power law distribution. Some artworks also have historical significance, for instance, paintings of kings, popes, and or historical events like the French Revolution. Some artists, as well as their artworks, were on the forefront of historical as well as intellectual movements. And many of these artworks may have been the driving force behind historical change. And that is definitely valuable. It's easy for us to look at the art world and deem it as something superficial or subject to the whims of rich and famous people. And maybe sometimes that's what it is. But what we sometimes forget is that these artworks like Jackson Pollock's number no. 5 or Paul Cezanne's card players are not in fact the most expensive artworks in the world. Many artworks, like those held by large museums and institutions, very often on public display, are in fact priceless because they have been deemed by society to be important artifacts of human civilization. You can argue something like the Mona Lisa as these paintings that are just boring old paintings of peoples and landscapes. But there are people who have literally risked their lives and died protecting these artworks, protecting artifacts of our collective cultural heritage. And that's priceless.